Hi, I'm Stefan Ringenschwander. I have built a film emulation pack for DaVinci Resolve. In this video I show you a little insight into some features from the pack, so let's get started. After unpacking the zip, you will find four folders with LUTs, overlays, power grades and user guides. In DaVinci Resolve I have also created corresponding power grades albums and to install the power grades all you have to do is drag and drop the color power grades to the color album, the film stock power grades to the film stock, lens power grades to the lens album and so on. This way everything is neatly organized for easy working. Let's start with some lens characteristics. I've created some power grades that recreate the look of chromatic aberration. So here's an example with chromatic aberration and without. The next power grade is to recreate a soft bloom effect inspired by the black promise filter, but I've changed the settings a bit so it doesn't just soften the highlights of the image, but soften the whole image instead, which is suitable for day and night scenes. I also designed power grades to replicate the look of Pesfal's field curvatures. Um, it is an optical problem that causes a flat object to appear sharp in only a specific part of the image, rather than being constantly sharp across the entire image area. If you try the Lens Blur OpenFX plugin in DaVinci Resolve, or simply draw an oval mask and blur it, the results look more like an overlay. It looks like you are looking through blurry glass or something. So I built my own power grade for a Lens Blur effect that looks more realistic. And since it's a power grade, of course, it is fully adjustable. To create an overscan look, I've designed several dirty mats and 4K resolution for different aspect ratios. And I also created some digital sprocket holes. To create an overscan look, we just need to add three nodes and in the first one we apply the video collage power grade that will split up the footage. In the second node we place the dirty matte power grade and in the last node we place the sprocket holes. Let's take a closer look inside the compound node and as you can see it is very easy to make further adjustments to our sprocket holes. Under external mat, we can change the pan and tilt values to change the position of our sprocket holes. Adjustments to the curves allows us to make the border of the sprocket holes thicker or thinner. Also, we can use the gain wheel to make adjustments to the color too. Since everything is separated, we can easily add a halation power grade to our node tree and it will only affect our dirt mat, but not our sprocket holes. Speaking of halation, if you have the studio version, there is now an OpenFX halation plugin integrated, which looks pretty good. But sometimes it can be a bit tricky to dial in the sliders correctly. Sometimes the edge detection doesn't work perfectly and it gives us bad results. So I also like to use my own halation power grade, which looks like this. And I added a glow feature that added a secondary glow on top of the halation, which can look pretty nice too. You can change the size of the secondary glow, um, the color and the intensity. Furthermore, you can also change the horizontal and vertically ratio to spread the glow in a certain direction. Back to the main halation, the default curve looks something like this, which can be sometimes too much in some scenes. You should experiment with the shape of the curve and a good way is to turn on the highlight tool. The highlight tool allows us to see exactly the region where the halation will affect our image.
Let's talk about softness and sharpness. If we take a closer look at some stills from Goodwill Hunting, we see a very specific kind of softness and sharpness in the image. In this still here, we can observe a halo-like sharpening effect around contrasty edges. Here is the still from Rush Hour 2. And a still from Train Spotting. In this video here, I will not explain the power grade in detail. I will show you some stills where we can compare the softness and sharpness power grade to an unmodified image. If I set the key output to 100%, the effect is way too strong. But this video is just a demonstration of what this power grade is doing to our image. Like every other power grade in this pack, it is fully customizable, so of course you can make changes to the softness and sharpness separately. So let's talk about color density. I always love to work with reference images, so let's take a look at some references first. So here's the image from Battle of Sexes from 2017, um, where we can really see the uh, deep rich colors and the color blue and color red. Here's another scene from Moonrise Kingdom with really nice red. And here another scene from La La Land 2016. And here another image from La La Land 2016. So a LUT like the Kodak 2383 can give our image a higher color density. But depending on the source material, this is often not enough and we may want to add more color density to our image. Or there are situations where we don't like using the Kodak 2383 at all, but we want denser colors for our image and these two power grades can help us with that. The first power grade gives us very nice, deep, rich colors without affecting our skin tones much and without adding grayish colors to our image, which is very important. The second power grade allows us to brighten or darken the red, green and blue channel individually. Here are some examples to show how this can be useful to emphasize specific areas in our image. To emulate negative film, it is almost impossible to create this with the native tools inside DaVinci Resolve, so that is why I built additional LUTs. I built one LUT that is designed after the Kodak Vision 3 200T color negative film. Another LUT is inspired by the Shift AI project. It is a method developed by Photocam to use film without shooting film. The digital footage is laser recorded to a new film negative, printed and scanned back to digital. I used all available information online to create this LUT. You can watch a butterfly comparison video of version 1 of the LUT on my website. The current version is version 2 in which I improved some colors, especially the color blue, which is less grainy than seen in the comparison video. In addition to the LUT, I added the following notes. Soften, gate weave, film damage overlay, flicker and grain. All those notes are part of the film emulation pack. Speaking of LUTs, I've also created some power grades that teach you a technique for smartly manipulating print film emulation LUTs like the popular Kodak 2383. For example, you can flatten the contrast curve to create a flat film look, but retain the colors and the mid-gray range. So for references, here are some stills from the short film Poor Cherries from 2018. To recreate such a look, I've designed some presets. This power grade here, for example, gives us a more saturated look 
that could be interesting for some projects. But in this case, the classic version is more suitable and gives us a good starting point for our grading. That's pretty much it. The package includes instructional user guides. This includes information on how to install and use each power grade created. Making it easy to deconstruct and understand each node and make further adjustments. About the node tree, I don't want to force people to use a specific color management workflow or node structure. The pack is built modular, very clean, very minimal. This way, it can be easily integrated to fit your node tree and your workflow. So that's it. You will find additional information on my website. Have a great day and see you next time.